can the mind of man go? Once it has been convinced that nothing is impossible. We've already visited the moon. That was impossible a short while back. We'll surely reach the other planets of our solar system if we really want to. And most likely the stars, eventually. But there are other directions. Other so-called impossibilities. Suppose, for example, a man looked in his mirror one day and seeing the lines of encroaching old age said to himself, Now why does a thing like that have to happen? I want out of this house. Maybe once we're out of it, Nathan will stop. Oh, Jessica, I'm so frightened. Of what, dear? Surely not of Nathan. I think he's finished his experiments with the animals, Jessica. What is he going to do now? I don't like the way he looks at me. Yes. That dog howled tonight. What kind of noise do you suppose I'll make? Because I'm next. And I'm not imagining it. I'm next. Our mystery drama, You're Only Young Twice, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Field and Carrington and stars Anne Shepard and Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly. With Act One. Aging, like it or not, is a process shared by all living things. Always has been and always will be. It isn't the fact of being old that's so intolerable. It's more the step by step irreversible deterioration that has to be faced along the way. Jessica Stone, a great romantic star of stage and screen in her day, finds herself at liberty with no professional prospects for the summer just beginning. So you see, Jim, there's just no reason for my staying on in the city and sweltering all summer. Uh, you're running out on me. You're going up to Maine where it's cool and quiet and beautiful, and you're leaving me stranded. Oh, come on now, Jim. Your lawyer, your business manager, your good friend, and more. And more, any time you say, you're leaving me stranded in the city, which lives for me only because you're... Oh, no, silly. Oh, I, I do wish you wouldn't, though, Jessica. Well, my sister wants me to come and spend the summer with her. But she's got a perfectly good husband up there. Great scientist or... At least a rich scientist, and you... He's getting old, Jim. Besides, Nathan's a very strange man. Well, all the same... And I, I didn't like the sound of the letter. It was more than just an invitation. I think she actually needs me. Something's wrong. Like what? I don't know. I don't know if she didn't say, but from the way her letters read, I think she's afraid of something. <laughs> is coming for a visit, Nathan. She phoned me last night. Jessica? Yes. She may spend the summer. I don't know. Wonderful. I'm delighted. You are? Of course I am. She's an intelligent woman. Good company. Yes, she was always the glamorous one. Nathan, that dog was howling again last night. I know that. Were you hurting him? No, I was not. I wish you could believe me. I use animals in my experiments. I do not hurt them. If only I knew what... Nathan, you can't blame me for feeling left out. Even Cal knows what you're working on. Cal He's... is my assistant. He has to know. Cal is a handyman. That's all Cal is. He takes care of the animals. I need him. Do you intend to use this, whatever it is you're working on? Do you intend to use it on people? Once you've finished with the animals? Beth, you forced me to ask you again to mind your own business. Because I'm the only people you have handy. Would you like me to keep you posted while you're gone? Well, of course. I'd jump at anything that was offered right now. And we both know it. I don't like being old and burned out and not wanted. Now, Stop that. It's true, isn't it? Well, you're not 16 anymore, but you're not old. Well, I feel old and tired and finished. That is nonsense. 
You're beautiful and you you sparkle. And I wish you weren't going away. (laughs) Oh, dear Jim, I don't know how I'll manage without you. I'm going to ask you once more, Jessica. Will you marry me? You know how dear you are to me. But I've been married four times. Divorced four times. No more. That's enough. Jesse! Jesse, over here! Yes! Oh, oh. oh good it is to see you. Jesse, such a long time. <laughs> oh, Jesse. I wonder how long it's been since anybody called me that. Since the last time I did, probably. Here, let me have a look at you. Yeah, don't look too closely, Ben. Oh, what are you talking about? You look wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of camouflage. The old gal's not what she used to be. Oh, listen, I'm older than you are, and I don't like it either. I hate it. Well, come on, let's, let's go pick up your luggage. We've got a long drive ahead of us. Off, Cal. Yeah, just mowing the lawn, Mr. Hardy. It gets real shaggy. You must be feeling pretty perky today. Oh, why do you say that? Yeah, trips around all over the place. Now, watch out you don't overdo. I'm not a day older than you, Cal, but not many days. And here you are mowing the lawn. Well, I ain't the one that counts. You got all that in your head about your RJ-97, and if you was oh, to just... Shut up, see... Cal. Yeah, yeah. Mrs. Hardy's gone to the airport to meet her sister, Jessica. She'll be visiting with us for a while. Jessica Stone. Jessica Stone. Hey, now, ain't that the name of that actor lady? That's right, the same one. Now, if you talk to her, be especially careful not to hint at, well, the kind of work we're doing in the lab. (laughs) If I was a few years younger... I wouldn't be talking to her about no work and no lab. You could bet on that. You old lecture. <laughs> well, now, if you was to kind of move up your schedule... Shut and up, say, Cal. Don't fret, Mr. Hardy. I won't do no talking. And try to keep the animals quiet while she's here. <laughs> about Nathan there. I haven't seen him in years. How is he? Well, all I can say is never marry a man 15 years older than you are. Uh, it's, I don't know, not exactly sour at him, but I don't really know him anymore. Mm. Maybe it's his age and maybe it's something else. He's changed. In what way? Well, he he lives in that laboratory. I mean, literally. He has a sitting room and bedroom there. I almost never see him. I almost never see anybody. There's just Nathan and Cal, and that's all. Cal? Mm. Local product. Nathan calls him his assistant. He helps out with the animals and putters around the ground. He's not very bright. It's uh, not an exciting life. <laughs> well... Maybe I can liven things up a little. If things don't deaden you. May I offer you a liqueur, Jessica? After that dinner, I don't really think I have any room for it, Nathan. (laughs) Of course you do. Here you are, Jessica. Thank you. Beth? Now, may I propose a toast? To perpetual youth, as practiced by my lovely sister-in-law. (laughs) Now, thank you. What do you mean? I must be very old. Very. Funny thing about age. Good for spiritous liquors, bad for people. Well, nothing much we can do about that. (laughs) We can dream. Oh, Nathan, is that... Old Patchy, I imagine. (laughs) He's the one who could tell you about old age. Patchy? A dog, one of my animals. You see, I I use animals in my experiments. 
Beth thinks that I torture them, but the truth no, is... No, I never said that. The truth is, my experiments are designed to help them, and do help them. Oh. Jessica, uh, do you have a new play for next season? Well, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do. Of course, if the right thing comes along... But you never know, do you? Well, I'll never forget you in the lives of Gretchen Day. Uh, you were... Well, you were absolutely magnificent. <laughs> well, when I made that film, I was very young. Were you expecting a call, Nathan? No. Would you mind answering it? Phone rings so seldom, I sometimes forget we have a phone. What kind of a play are you looking for this time, Jessica? I really don't know. I'm getting a little old for romantic leads these days. Well, they're always character roles, aren't they? I've never played much character. Funny about that. You just can't imagine yourself ever growing old. And then one morning, you get up, you look in the mirror, and all of a sudden, you see... Timothy, it's for you. It's from New York. Oh, That'll be Jim Blake, most likely. Uh, I promised to call him when I got in, and I forgot. I didn't know that you were such a fan of Jessica's name. Oh, well, maybe I exaggerated a little. Can't do any harm. She was good, you know. She still is. Uh, excuse me for bothering you, Mr. Hardy, but all Patch is uh, having one of his spells. Oh, that dog. What's his problem this time? Same old thing, uh, shaking and, uh, you know, not breathing the way he ought to. I, I think it maybe if I was... It's him, all right. I t- uh, oh, Jessica, this, uh, yes, this is Cal Summers, my assistant. Uh-huh. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> How do you do, Miss Stone? I swear... If- and if you ain't prettier than you are in them movies I've seen... Don't listen to him, Jessica. He's an old rake. Uh, come on, Cal. Let's go down and see what we can do for old Patchy. Now, how long has he been acting this way? Well, that's the last we'll see of Nathan tonight. Really? Yes, once he shuts himself up in that lab, forget it. Jessica, if he asks to borrow money from you, don't give him any, will you? Borrow money. He's broke or very close to it. I don't really know how bad it is, but money is very short these days. I don't understand. I always thought that he had... I I mean, I I thought he was quite rich. I guess... I guess his experiments, whatever they are, have cost him a lot of money. If you need money... No, no, of course. Oh, Jessica, I'm so frightened. Of what? Surely not of Nathan. You heard that dog howl this evening. Well, dogs do howl. It's their nature. There doesn't have to be anything sinister about it. I think he's finished the experiments with the animals, Jessica. What's he going to do now? I don't like the way he looks at me. That dog howled tonight. What kind of noise do you suppose that I'll make because I'm next? I'm not just imagining it. I'm next. (laughs) who devotes himself to scientific research is necessarily a curious man. That's the starting point for all research. Curiosity. Carried too far, however, it can become dangerous. Are we witnessing a case in point? We'll try to satisfy your curiosity about that when I return shortly with Act Two. Experiments which Nathan Hardy has been conducting in his laboratory are of such a secret nature that only his assistant, Cal Summers, knows what their purpose is. Although his wife questions it, Nathan himself says that his experiments are beneficial to the animals he uses. But Nathan is one of those intensely curious researchers, and it may be that his thirst for knowledge prejudices his judgment. He's with his assistant now in his laboratory, attending to a sick old dog he calls Patchy. What's 
What's your problem, Patsy, old boy? Your poor old bone aching again. Uh, you ask me, that old dog's gone just about as far as he can go. You can get him through the night, can't you, Count? Uh, I don't like to promise. Why don't we give him a shot of RJ-97 right now, Mr. Hardy? No, I want to save him for tomorrow. I have a special reason. Well, uh, anything to do with your sister-in-law, that uh, uh, Jessica lady? Just pull him through the night, Count. Well, I'll do what I can. Hey, uh, Mr. Hardy. Yes? When do I get mine? Your RJ-97? Soon. Now. Very soon. Well, I, I don't see nothing standing in the way of it right now. It, 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 it's ready, ain't it? It is. But I'm not. I'm not quite yet. Maybe tomorrow, Cal. Or maybe the day after. Yeah. Uh, Whatever you say, of course. Me and old Patchy here, we'll try to hang on till our time comes. Is there anything I can do to help with breakfast, Beth? Oh, pour the coffee if you like. All I have to do now is scramble the eggs. I hope Nathan doesn't let his get cold again. Is he still in the laboratory? I don't know where he is. I haven't seen him. But he surely didn't work all night. Who knows? Jesse, he said he wanted to show you through the house this morning. Will you see if you can get anything out of him about what he's doing? Well, I can try. But I don't think he's likely to tell me anything he won't tell you. Oh, he might. He won't tell me anything, of course. Not if he has plans for me. But you, he might. Beth, I think you must be wrong. I'm just going to have to throw the eggs out if Nathan doesn't get it. Don't let me catch you throwing my eggs out. I could smell that bacon all the way down the hall. I'm starved. Oh, did you work all night? No, no, I went to bed early. I'm feeling quite fit this morning. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. Ah, you look radiant. Well, thank you. A good night's sleep and a little cosmetic booster. <laughs> <laughs> Very becoming, whatever it is. Everybody ready? Uh, don't let your eggs get cold. Jessica, do you feel up to making a tour of the house this morning? Nineteen rooms, you know, three floors. I can make it if you can. I'm not as <laughs> decrepit as I look. Uh, what do you think of it? Beautiful old place. Just beautiful. Takes you right back to a quite different style of living, doesn't it? Yes, needs some work, of course, but after all, there are just the two of us. Oh, it's lovely. That's about it, except for the laboratory wing, of course. Uh, would you like to see that? Very much, yes. All right. Come along. This is actually my home, Jessica. I keep this small suite in the lab wing, and well, I come to visit Beth sometimes, but well, this is where I live. Mm. Very nice. But don't be embarrassed. Beth and I are... Well, there's not much left of our marriage. Beth must have told you. Uh, not that flatly. I know she isn't very happy. Uh, this is my living room. I like heavy Victorian furniture, as mm -hmm. you can see. Uh, the bedroom's back that way, and this door... This is the entrance to my laboratory. Uh, might as well see that, too. Your laboratory? Mm. You'll be the first, except for Cal and myself. Beth has never seen the lab. Oh. Well, oh, I'm flattered. Uh, go ahead, Jessica. Go on in. Oh. Very impressive. <laughs> I've spent a, a lot of money on equipment. Uh, too much, really. Uh, but Cal... Right here, uh, Mr. Hardy. Cal, bring Patsy out, will you? Uh, the dog you heard howling last night, Jessica. Oh. As I said, he's very old. Uh, how do you do, Miss Jessica? How do you do? I thought best carry poor old Patsy in. <laughs> he ain't getting around so good this morning. I uh, got through the night all right, though. That's the main thing. Uh, uh, Cal just... Put him down on the pillow there. Hmm? Uh, I said. 
There you go, boy. Uh, you see, Jessica, there's nothing really wrong with this dog at all, except old age, which, of course, means that just about everything is wrong with him. <laughs> you look so sad. What kind of dog is he? <laughs> Too many kinds to list. I got him at the pound. I imagine they'd have well, put him away by this time if I hadn't taken him. Uh, might be a kindness. I don't see what else there is to do. Jessica, wait a little, and you will. Want me to uh, give him his milk, Mr. Hardy? Yes, please, Cal. Here you go, patchy old boy. Nice, cool drink of milk for you. Uh, just a minute, Cal. Hmm? Are, are you going to put something in the milk? Just a few drops from this bottle. And keep the bowl steady, Cal. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four. All right, Cal. Give it to him. Here we go, Patchy. This is the big one. What? Is it all right to ask? What? What is it that you put in the milk? We call it R.J. Ninety-seven. Uh, Cal, would would you mind leaving us? Well, I, uh, I don't think it'd be a good idea for me to hang around just in case something goes wrong. You'll be all right, Cal. I'll call you if I need you. I, uh... RJ-97. It's the 97 formula. 96 were failures or only partial successes. This is the one that I've been working toward for... Well, better than ten years now. R.J. 97. What will it do to him? You'll see. It will take a little time. Uh, five minutes or so. But you'll see. Take a look at him. What's happening to him? It's <laughs> unbelievable. Down, boy, down. He's acting like a puppy. He is a puppy, or a little more. I'd say he's just about the equivalent of oh, a year and a half, maybe as much as two years. Oh, he has a good ten years to look forward to. But Nathan, I don't understand. RJ-97. The RJ stands for rejuvenation. Rejuvenation? Yes, it will work on people, too. I'm sure it will. No reason on earth why it shouldn't. On people? Oh, Jessica... Jessica, how would you like to be young again? I can do it for you. Make me young again. About 25, I guess. Over 20, under 30, certainly, within that range. How can you? Four drops of RJ-97, Jessica. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Look at Patchy. Was that sleight of hand? <laughs> Do you know, I'm not sure I'd want to go through it again. All that stress, that... Those silly mistakes. No. No, no, Jessica, that's the most beautiful part. You see, you would retain your memory. You wouldn't have to be young and foolish again. Only young. You'd be as wise as you are today. All the experience, none of the fatigue. How can you know that? I proved it a hundred times with animals. Oh, we'll retain our memories, all right. We? You too? Why do you think I went to the trouble? Do you think I intend to live with this bone-weary old buddy of mine when four drops of RJ-97 will make it young and strong again? You and I? Jessica, there are certain promises I'll ask you to make. You wouldn't expect to get a thing like youth for nothing, would you? I see. What promises? I won't ask for your soul, although that is the going price, I understand. No, no, not your soul. All I require of you is that you agree. Oh, Jesse. Jesse, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. I have to make a phone call, Beth. I'll have the operator in wait, charge. Jesse, you. please. You were in the lab with Nathan, weren't you? Yes. What happened? 
Please, Jesse, I have to know. Nothing. Nothing much really happened. He gave that old dog a dose of some kind of medicine and it got better. That's all I saw. He gave it a dose of medicine? That's right. He's lying to you. He wouldn't drive himself the way he does just to cure sick dogs. You've let him fool you, Jesse. You've let him pull the wool over your eyes. Yes, I have to make this phone call. I'm in a hurry. All right. But he is lying. Did you call me, Mr. Hardy? Yes, I called you. Uh, uh, Take a look at old Patsy. That's all. That's all Patsy there. That ain't nothing but a pup. It's Patsy all the same. Well, lamb sakes. That shot of our J-97 sure took hold on him, didn't it? <laughs> that there's just about the best one yet. No reason why it shouldn't work just as well for you. Well, I sure hope so. When my time comes... Cal. Hmm? Cal, it's time now. What? For me? Yes. Right now? The work is finished. Why not? I have it all set up for you here. This glass of water. You, 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 you didn't know. You didn't overdo it, did you? Oh no, four drops, Cal. Come on, drink it down. Uh, you, you, you ain't having yours now. No, there are a few things I have to take care of first. You go ahead. Hey, uh, well, here goes. Good luck, Cal. That kind of catches in your throat, <clears throat> don't it? I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, uh, how long, how long, you reckon, before... Bef- ah, it hurts, Mr. Hardy. <clears throat> hurts in my stomach. That won't last long, Cal. I... Oh, I, th- I think I'd better just sit down here. It was an RJ-97... You put it my drink, was it? I couldn't leave you free to talk, uh, Cal. Oh, it poisoned me. I'm going to die. If it got out, they'd mob me. Everybody wanting it. Can't you see that? You wouldn't have known what to do with it anyway. You'd have wasted it. Oh, the way I worked. And even the dogs. The rats you gave from theirs. But me, you keep here. Ah. Oh. Ah, I'm sorry, Cal. Truly, I'm sorry. Here is a man who dispenses youth out of one bottle and out of another, death. Give a man that kind of power, and who knows in what direction it will bend his mind. But would you want to be the person who drank four drops out of one or perhaps the other of his bottles? Jessica Stone has a decision to make. We'll see how she makes it when I return shortly with Act Three. very new about the desire to recapture youth. Ponce de Leon traveled a long way looking for a fountain of youth that didn't exist. A fellow named Faust is said to have sold his soul to the devil in exchange for youth. Who, though, could yearn more poignantly for the return of youth than a famous actress who is beginning to realize that youth and beauty are slipping away from her. Nathan Hardy has offered Jessica Stone her second chance at youth. Hello? Jim? Jessica? Look, there's something you must do for me. Well, of course. What? Liquidate everything. Understand? Sell everything I own for whatever you can get. And bring the money up here to me in cash. In cash? Yes. Please. Cash. Jessica... Are you out of your mind? Within 24 hours. Don't try to make decisions for me, Jim. Just do as I say. Well, you don't 
damn well I can't sell everything within 24 hours. It's impossible. Don't make problems for me. Just get the money. All right. Jim? Jim? Nathan, have you seen Cal anywhere? Hmm? Cal? No. Why, Beth? Well, I'd like him to go to the shopping center. I gave Cal the day off. The day off? As a matter of fact, he may be gone for several days. There's some kind of family trouble. I didn't get the straight of it. Family trouble? <laughs> well, I'll go myself. Maybe Jessica would like to go with me. I... Well, the truth is, I promised to show Jessica the Rose Garden this afternoon. The Rose Garden? But, Nathan, she can see that any time. The point is, Beth, she wanted to see it this afternoon, and I promised to show it to her. Nathan, I don't like deceiving Beth. Why won't you make Beth young again? There's enough of that stuff, isn't there, for all of us? That stuff is called RJ-97. There's enough, yes. But I don't want to give it to Beth. I want to give it to you. Couldn't you give it to both of us? She'd be young and beautiful again. She was beautiful when you married her. Not as beautiful as you. Oh, Nathan, please. You I have always loved, always. Oh, Jessica, I can give you such a life. Think of it. Both of us young, a brilliant scientist, a great actress. Nathan, what's that? What's what? Under that big tree, that mound looks like a grave, a fresh grave. Oh, yes, yes, it is a grave. Nathan. One of my dogs died this morning. I buried him. Looks big enough to be a man's grave. He was a St. Bernard, as big as a man. Oh, Let's get out of here. All right. Nathan, I I can't do this to death. You insist we be married. Why? That's big of me. Oh, not really. We'll be completely different people, don't you understand? In our twenties, as far as anybody can tell, we won't be Nathan Hardy and Jessica Stone anymore. But I don't love you. But I won't be the same man. Can't you get that through your head? I'll be... Well, actually, I... I'll be as young as you. And I wasn't a bad-looking man when I was young, Jessica. That's not the point. I don't love you. Jessica, we're going to do this my way. Or we're not going to do it at all. I'll get it. I'm sure it's for you, Jesse. Could that be your man in New York? Hello? I guess it could be, Jim, yes. I told him I wanted the money here, but oh, tomorrow indeed. afternoon. Oh, it's for you, Jesse. Oh, okay, thank you. Jim Blake from New York again. He has a nice voice. Oh, yes. Hello, Jim. I sold your stocks. Couldn't make a deal on anything else. Just the stocks? Well, how much does it come to? Uh, we'll count the money when I get there. It's in cash? Yes, it's in cash. Um, how are you coming out? I'm uh, flying to Bangor, doing at 11.30. Can you meet me? Yes, I'll borrow Nathan's car. I'll be there. All right. Is it coming here? That's wonderful. He's, uh, he seems very upset. What about? What right is he to be upset? He's only your business manager. Well, he's a good friend, too. Or used to be.
He gave it to that old dog, and in a few minutes, that dog was as young and as frisky as a To marry him, after we've both taken the RJ-97, just as if you didn't exist. He is really a dreadful man, isn't he? I think I know who's in that grave. A person you meet, not a dog. Cal, the handyman. He had to go away, Nathan said, because of some kind of family trouble. Cal doesn't have any family that I ever heard of. We'll have to call the police then. No, no, not just yet. You say you really believe that he can make people young again. He made the dog young. I saw that with my own eyes. I want some of that R.J., whatever it is. I don't think he'll give it to you, Beth. I'll think of a way to get it. It's about uh, an hour's drive to the house, Jim. Oh, I have so much to talk to you about. I brought you $50,000. It doesn't matter now, Jim. The money doesn't matter. That's all changed. Oh? Jim, Nathan has found out how to make old people young again. Found out? Oh, that'll come off Oh, no, no, no. He can do it. I saw him with a dog. And he wants to make me young. Just me and him. And then he wants to... But I told Beth, and she thinks she can... Oh, you stop it, Jessica. Just stop it. You're not making any sense. Beth and you and I, Jim, we're all going to be young again. Well, listen, even, even if there's any truth in all this nonsense, which I don't believe for a minute... I don't want any part of it. But, Jim... It is unnatural, and it's no good, Jessica. I'm going to do it. I want to be young. Did he bring the money? Yes. Yes, Nathan, he brought it. How much? All he could get on such short notice. How much? Fifty thousand dollars. That's all right. It's enough to get started with. Nathan, I'm not going to marry you. I think you will. I suppose I'd be smarter to let you think I intend to. But I just can't. I don't love you. I don't even like you. Even if you weren't married to Beth, even then, I couldn't... Jessica, that's not very kind of you. No. But sometimes it's impossible to be both kind and honest. Well... We'll go ahead with the plan. Maybe you'll change your mind when we're both young. Why don't we just get out of this place? I don't trust that man. Oh, no. If he's found a way to make people young, I intend to be one of the people. It's all right, Jim. You and Beth will be right there, in his living room, just outside the lab. Well, how can we get in there without his knowing? I don't think it ought to be hard. I'll leave the attache case with the money in my room. Say, I've forgotten it. I'll tell him I don't feel well enough to go back upstairs for it. You know, partly from nervousness, partly from the smell in the lab. Mm -hmm. It really does smell. Well, I don't see what that has to do with it. He'll go up and get the money. Believe me, he won't make a move until he has his hands on that money. So when he leaves, you and Beth can come in and hide. I don't like it. I don't like any part of it. Big bluish gray attaché case, Jessica. That's the one, Nathan. Hurry. In the bedroom. Make sure he leaves the door open. Right, right. And are you feeling better now, Jessica? Not much. I don't know. I feel sort of faint. It's very close in here. Go on into the lab. Let's get this over with. Nathan, please. Can't we have the door open? That odor, I, I, I simply can't breathe. All right. 
I guess it doesn't matter. Everything's ready, Jessica. That's your glass there on the counter. Pick it up, Jessica. All right. Here's to youth. Now, you, Jessica, drink. I can. Of course you can. You saw me drink mine. It's perfectly safe. Uh, I'm afraid. I don't want to anymore. All right, watch me. Stand there for a few minutes and watch me grow young and strong again. Then see whether or not you want to. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, Lord, look. Uh, you... Like a college boy. It's better than I thought. I feel... I feel wonderful. Now, now you can drink yours, Jessica. You can see that it's safe. No, I can't. I don't want it. I, I, I don't want to be the way you are. Drink it. No. Then give it to me, Jesse. I'll drink it. Beth, no. I will. You can't stop me. Beth, don't. I will. Beth. It hurts. Beth. Why does it hurt? I told oh. you not to, Beth. Oh. It was meant for Jessica. Beth. Oh, sit down. My stomach. Oh, Ethan, when did... When did... I think I'm going... Oh. Oh. There's no pulse. It's her own fault. I told her not to drink it. It oh. was poison, wasn't it? And you meant it for Jessica. She wouldn't marry me. She said terrible things to me. She deserves to die. Jim. Jim, don't. I'm going to kill him. Stay away from me! Give me some gun! Don't move, either of you. I'll have to kill you, you know, no matter what. But if you try anything, I'll do it sooner. Jimmy means it. I'm sure he does. Here, in this bottle, is every drop of RJ-97 there is. Anywhere. In all the world. Now watch closely. All down the drain. So that there'll never be anyone else, you see. Only me. Now, watch this. This is the formula for RJ-97. And in this file are all the notes I made step by step for ten long years. Torn up in just a few seconds. Yes. I dropped them in the wastebasket. Now... Now I strike a match. <laughs> I drop it in the wastebasket. Ten years' work up in flames. Don't worry, though. I have it all in my head. I can make more RJ-97 when I need it. In 40 or 50 years. But no one else ever. Now, Jessica, I want you to go to the door... And close it. It's setting up a draft. Very slowly and carefully. So you don't make me nervous with this gun in my hand. Do as he says, Jesse. But you're not to move, Jim. Not as much as a muscle. Run, Jessica! I told you! Kyle! Jim! Your arm's bleeding? Never mind. We've got him shut inside there. Now, help me move this couch in front of the door so he can't get out. Uh, after you pushed me out of the door, I heard a shot. Jim, you're bleeding. Uh, he's, he's not a very good shot. He killed Beth. He'll pay for it. Port Davis Police. I want to report a murder. Yes. Murder at the Hardy place. Nathan Hardy. Jim, the lad's on fire. The fire in the wastebasket must have set off some kind of... You stay back, Jessica. The heat 
The heat is too much. I'm afraid the whole place is going. Oh, Beth. Poor Beth. I'm sorry, Jessica. You know what I forgot? The attaché case, all that money. I left it in the laboratory. Considering what might have happened to you, it's not too high a price to pay. As I said earlier, aging is a process shared by all living things, always has been and always will be. Waistlines expand, hair turns gray or disappears altogether, and except for an occasional Nathan Hardy, we all manage to take it pretty philosophically. It isn't all downhill. It has its compensations. I'll be back shortly. It and living quite happily in New York City. Now that it doesn't matter to her particularly, Jessica is, of course, one of the busiest actresses around. And she's happy. After all, doesn't her husband always do what she asks him to? Be with us, young or old, for our next exploration of the not-quite-impossible. Our cast included Anne Shepard, Norman Rose, Virginia Dwyer, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.